Hey guys, Top Time for everyone here. So, as you can tell by the title, of course, I'm going to be going into scripting and how to use certain events. In this video, we're going to be making a button that damages you on touch. It's one of the most basic scripts you can take. And this is how I'm going to start getting you guys into more advanced stuff. At the end of each video I make, I'm going to be giving you guys an objective to complete. Basically, something you can make for practice. Let's get started. I already went ahead and made a working version. So, pretty much whenever we touch it, it hurts us. So, we're going to be using an event, a function, and a variable. Three things I went over in previous videos. I will be leaving the links to those videos for you guys to run over them if you really need to. So, in this case, we're going to be scripting. So, we're going to need a script. Now, this isn't really required, but it's a habit of mine. Typically, you're going to want to set up a way to order your code. You don't need to, but it makes it better in the long run. Now, you will hear my typing. I tried to fix the issue. I'm using a separate keyboard this time instead of my original built in keyboard. So, now we're going to have to make a variable for the part we want to touch. So, when you're setting variables, in this case, you want to set a variable to the part. You can set variables using being specific or using hierarchical status. It's kind of like a family tree. Script is a child of part. Part is a child of workspace. So say we have workspace. Branches off to say part. Basically, script would be a child of part. So, basically, this kind of setup, we can use a variable. So, let's call the part we're touching block. So, block. Block is this part, but we're working with the script, so we want to reference the script's parent, which is the part. When you're writing these, script has to be all lowercase, and parent has to be capital P. So, let's keep moving. One of my previous videos, I covered functions. So. First, we're going to want to call a function, which I went over. Next, you want to give the function a name. So, her, in this case. I went over what a function was before. Basically, it's a way to hold a line of code. Alright, so an event. In this case, we're going to be using the dot touched event, which fires the function when we touch it. So, I showed this before in my events video. Basically, it runs the event dot touched event touched instance other part. Basically, within our function, we can write a parameter that names the part touch it, that touches it. In this case, this would be our legs. When using an event, you want to connect it. So, in this case, block is what we're touching, dot touched is the event we're using. Use a colon 
and then signify that you're going to connect. And then you would type the function's name within parentheses. So, so far we have a script with one variable, a function, and an event. Block is the script's parent, which is the part we're going to be touching. So, whenever the block is touched, it fires this function. Let's try it out. Let's just make it print. No real reason I could say that's just for showing you. Whenever we touch it, it prints, bam, you got shot. So, using this, we can think, alright, so, if body part in this case is our parents, is our legs, how would we get to the humanoid to do damage? We can set a fu another variable within the function. So in this case, we're going to call it care. Body part is obviously the body part that's being touch touching the block. So if we get body parts parent, we would get our player's model. Now from that, we can find the humanoid. Because the humanoid is a member of your character. So, so far, when we touch it, we have two variables set for the character's model and your humanoid. I have said this before, but I'm going to reference it real quick. If you try writing a variable inside of a function and calling it outside of the function, it'll come up as a nil value. So you'd have to reset that variable. Let's keep moving on. So now we want to do damage. We have it finding your humanoid, but we don't do any damage yet. So we want to make it so that your health, the health property of your humanoid, subtracts 5. All right, so you would think that minus five will work, right? Sadly, no. So we have to write an equation. In this case, we want our humanoid's health minus five. Basically, what this does is it takes your current health, subtracts it by five, and it makes your health that. So let's try it out. Now whenever you touch it, you lose 5 health. Alright, so... In... I'm gonna cover weight this time, because I have I did realize I missed it. So, let's say you take 5. Weight is basically a weight or a pause in the script. So wait, say one. The script would wait one second to run the next line of code. In this case, let's do ten damage. All right. Now, what should happen is it should damage is ten, wait one, and damage is ten more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. That's about it. Now, you guys now know how to use the dot touched event. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. I can try and explain some more detail if you don't completely understand this. Alright, so I've been saying I'm going to give you guys a thing to do. So, using the dot touched event in the properties of a part, make it so that when you touch a part, it becomes translucent, waits five seconds, 
and it becomes visible. I'll be typing that in the description for you guys. Feel free to check out New Era Studios. Join. We're always looking for new members. We we'll, we're gonna be posting more videos here and there. Be expecting some more stuff. Feel free to get your friends to join. Check out our other videos.